on the road to prove a certain question regarding on the number of prime numbers less than a given quantity. We begin with at attacking the not-so-subtle question, what is max m? That is, what is the largest gap in any iteration of the S model? And this begins with the following subtle observation. Surprising to some, but obvious in hindsight perhaps, is the gap distribution through the next prime squared is completely determined by the current prime. This is a fact of simple prime sieving, and it is true for each particular iteration of the S model. Next, we notice something not so subtle happened to the notion of the successor. Once we pass the disconcerting effects of S0, all gaps are forced to be even valued. This trivially uh, dividing them by 2 gives us something like the positive naturals again. But importantly, except for S1, they are not of unit length. That is, the successor seems to become a random operator. We can guess the next location of the average local gap, but we can't know without direct computation. We now remind you about the coalescent rows of the S model. Each pair of gaps will coalesce in the next iteration. Each set of triples will coalesce in the following iteration, and so on. That is, each particular iteration can see at least a short distance in the future, but this means the future somehow constrains the past. In other words, the primes being what they are constrain the future and the past with only Z1 acting as the bootstrap to start everything. The S model does not define the primes. The primes are what they are. It simply exposes them like an artist exposes the hidden sculpture they already see within the stone. So we make the following claim which we accept completely axiomatically. The prime gaps are random. That's had deep consequences. This is equivalent to there does not exist a prime counting function whose input is the first n primes which can generate the next prime. There's still some missing information. There will always be missing information. Before we move on, we address one more important fact. Randomness has a notion of incompressibility. Yet we showed each model iteration is compressible via its internal palindrome. The resolution is actually straightforward. The S model is not the primes. The primes are the ashes left over in what we call the midden the ashes from the Big Bang of the CKM. Even if we consider membership below the next prime squared, this has uh, some, the expected count of dividing by the current log of the current prime. While using Merton and Chebyshev together gives us an approximation for our, our first minor primorial. So we can estimate the count size, um, which is what we expect to be certainly prime, that is less than our current prime squared. And this is becoming arbitrarily small. That is, eventually the size of the palindrome substantially exceeds the size of the subset known to be prime. The palindrome is talking about itself, not the primes. And yet it talks about the primes since every prime has to be a member of the S model or its residuals for every M. But like the naturals, the S model is mostly filled with composites. It is its own beast needing to be tamed. Given all of this, we now draw your attention to Bertrand's lemma, which states for all n greater than 1, uh, there exists a prime between n and 2n. This is absolutely fundamental to the structure, uh, to the study of the structure of prime numbers. If max m is the largest gap, and the gaps are chosen at random, the only possibility allowed which satisfies all of the S models is if max M is less than our current prime uh, minus 1 times 2. That is, <coughs> since our current prime is less than our next prime, less than twice our current prime, a restatement of Bertrand's lemma, we subtract 1 from each term, <coughs> And, we fi and uh, finally, notice since the smallest gap is a twin, 
we can write uh, our next uh, nice bounding function, and uh, we give the maximum gap for uh, for our next prime. But it's also the maximum gap for the entire set. While this protects the first non-trivial member's gap from violating the rule, it does so at the price of capping the entire set. The flavor of random is not uniform because we clearly have stable covariance and memory via the SRRs. We're going to look at this deeper. This rule also forces the largest span between any three primes, the sum of two gaps, to be uh, less than or equal to twice our next prime minus one, since the composite killing machine will cause such pairs to coalesce in the next iteration of the model. That's a certainty. The same is true for the next few tuple lengths, as well as gap triples and quads. This is all due to the short-range future telling of the S model. The following table gives the first few local maximums. We computed up to we show up to the computation of M5, but we computed up to 10, and um, the table is only fully populated for M equals 2. Above that, it always remains underpopulated. The S model must know something about the future of other prior primordial modular sets because they evolve from it. Nature's solution is to make the gaps random but bounded. Now we're going to use this to prove Legendre's prime conjecture. Consider the distance between two successive numbers squared. That is, uh, it's 2n plus 1. Now the largest prime in this region is uh, at most n. Um, or largest prime less than n is uh, at most n. Um, so the largest prime in that region would be at most 2n minus 2. So there's always going to be at least two primes to span the distance, at least one gap. So the short answer is for all n greater than 0, there exists at least two primes between n squared and n plus 1 squared. Now just as pi of x is the member counting function for primes on the naturals below some value x, we can define a similar function for the S model. That is, our member accounting function returns the index of the nearest member not greater than some value. By indexing in this manner, we rid ourselves of counting the fully degenerate zeroth prime, as we had cleverly set its index to zero. To compare this co-prime member accounting function with the natural version, we need to add m members we lost, and remember that our first composite is our next prime squared. We lost M members because they're co-prime. So that is pi of x is equal to M plus our pi function for everything less than our next prime squared. In particular, pi of our next prime squared equals M plus our pi of M minus 1. This is because our next prime squared is counted in the local function, but obviously it's composite, not counted in the global function. So the difference between prime squares is the same minus 1. That is, since the PMF, our f of m, is constantly evolving, the natural region of prediction is between successive prime squared. So define an operator to measure this. We call it delta pi of pm, which obviously it's a function of pm. This is a trivial analog in the S model. It's just off by 1. So as long as we agree to count between prime squares, they're identical. Now we ask, what is the best estimate for the count of members of our delta pi operator? We begin by examining the span appealing to the PNT for the best local estimator. We get uh, the following. <clears throat> a little algebra, we're dividing by the log of the pr uh, prime, or, t or twice that because we're on the square, and uh, we get p plus some small term, but that's p. We can now define what we call the primal backbone. 
This is the line of expected outcomes. Let x equal 1 plus j times our uh, local average be our estimator for the jth member. Then define L, our lumbar function, or backbone function, at M to be the floor of x minus 1 divided by the average. This is the expected count uh, for some x. That is, it returns the same as our other function. Notice again, we ignore 1 by subtracting it to maintain alignment with our member counting function. It is straightforward to show that the, di the difference along the lumbar of uh, prime squares is the same as the difference of the pi function along prime squares. This one is exact, the other one is um, uh, random. Or they're both random actually. And they're both p. That is, we can assign the, the differences, they're identical, and we can split them. Define psi of m to be um, the difference between pi of m and l of m at our next prime squared. That is, we are separating same power terms to get our psi at pm is equal to zero plus an error term. How much are we away from the backbone? Pi of m is measuring the distributive noise strangely between the next prime squared and its expected location from the backbone and it's dependent upon the current prime. Let's look at the backbone in greater detail. Since the expectation operator is a function of the next prime, of the current prime, we have an infinite number of backbones for each unique current prime. We now ask two questions of the backbone that are satisfy both forms of Chebyshev functions. That is, we want that L at x plus log of x, subtract L of x is equal to log of x. That's the first form. And the second form is returning our semilinear form between prime squares. Both generate the same function when Taylor expanded to first order. And it's trivial to show that the lumbar function is the logarithmic integral at x. That is, the analytic continuation of the backbone of the S model is the logarithmic integral. This means logarithmic integral is indeed the best possible representation of the primes, because the backbone is constructively the best possible representation of the primes. <laughs>